Hey everyone, David here from Lion Boy Studio. Uh, today's tutorial will be the first in a series on how to make your own arcane style character in Blender 3.0. First off is going to be how to do stylized hair using a particle system. And then in part two, I wanna explore some different ways you can paint uh, textures and use camera mapping to really push your shots to the next level. So the tricky part about doing a tutorial like this is I don't work with Fortiche or Riot Games, so I don't have a clue what their actual process is. I just spent way too much time analyzing their shots uh, because I love animation and frankly their work is some of the best I've ever seen. And so because I didn't have access to their shots, I needed something um, similar enough to Arcane I could use for this tutorial. And luckily, I recently had to do a 30 second opening animation for a board game project I'm working on. And I think it fits perfectly for this purpose. So let's watch it now and we'll discuss it after. I used to dream of flying over Naviri. I would glide past the glorious arenas, wave to merchants on the floating docks, seemed so peaceful. I felt so safe. But now that I'm here in Nibiri, I understand that peace came with a price. A battle fought by tidal blades before us. This time, the fight is ours. So the animation you just saw was for a board game called Tidal Blades, which I've been working on with my wife for almost four years now. And it's currently on Kickstarter, so if you want to check it out, uh, please do, it's very cool. I'll leave the link in the video description, but uh, it's not gonna be the topic of this uh, video. So when I started planning this animation, I knew hair would be a major challenge. And it took me a lot of trial and error, and, but I think I finally managed to find the best way to do it. So let's jump in Blender and I'm gonna show you everything I learned. All right, so I'm gonna be using this classic uh, portrait of Jinx as reference and let's analyze it for, for a minute before we start. Um, so as you can see, there are a couple of very fine strands of hair here and there, but they've been very carefully placed and the hair is mostly made up of these larger strands of hair that are almost flat, but still get this kind of nice uh, gradient on them, a bit of specular and so, we're gonna look at how to make one of these strands and then we'll be able to duplicate it and add these uh, individual hair afterwards. All right, so let me start by creating a plane with Shift A, Mesh Plane. Then I'm gonna to go to the Particle Properties, click on the plus button and change this from Emitter to Hair. So as you can see at first, they're gonna be probably pointing uh, up and we want them pointing down. So I'm gonna press RX and 180 to rotate them. And I also don't want all those hair. What I actually want is just one single hair, which is gonna be called our parent hair. And all the volume of our hair is gonna be generated around that single hair. So what I'm gonna do is change this number from a thousand to just one. And as you can see, I'm gonna be left with just one hair, but it's on the side right now that I'd rather have it in the center. So I'm gonna go uh, in particle edit mode in the top left. I'm just gonna select all those points and delete them. And then I'm gonna create a new hair in the center. So if you go on the left to your toolbox, you can choose add and make sure to choose count of one. You just wanna add one hair and keys, I'm gonna set it to five. So if I click in the center, you see I'm gonna create just one single hair. And if I had chosen like a bigger number, you see it would have gotten more subdivided, but I think five uh, is enough for our needs. All right, so at this point, let me go to the children section of the particle properties and change this from none to interpolated. And I'm not sure you can see this quite well on your screen. So let me go quickly to my uh, render settings under hair, change this from strand to strip, and then back to particle properties. I can go to hair shape and change the diameter scale. So um, as you can see, I still only get one single hair, which is my parent and all these are called the children and they're being generated around it. So if I switch back to object mode, I can bump up this number to whatever I want. And they're still going to be influenced by the single hair. And the cool thing I can do is also go under clumping and click use clump curve. And then I can drag this little uh, point in the top left and I can create uh, more of a triangular shape. 
And it's, it's really blocky at this point, but I'm gonna show you in a minute how to fix that. So to make this a bit smoother, what you can do is go to viewport display and change your strength steps to five. Um, and if you want things to be even smoother, uh, I would go to render and activate B spline. Now you can still change your clump curve if needed. And um, now it's still a bit too large and cubic. So what you can do is adjust your plane because it's, it's filling up that whole space. Uh, you could do it by scaling it, but I don't suggest doing that because it's going to be messing up your values later on if those scaling values don't stay at 1, 1, 1. So instead, I would go in edit mode by pressing tab and scale the plane this way so it's, so it's thinner. So one thing to note about particle edit mode is that sometimes when we switch back to object mode, you notice that there's a small difference. And the reason is that particle edit mode has its own viewport display uh, settings in, under tool. If you press N, tool, viewport display, you'll see there's a path steps here, and this needs to match exactly what you write under viewport display here, so that when you switch back to object mode, you get the same result. Uh, another option that's good to know is trend lengths, preserve trend lengths. Um, personally, I prefer to leave it unchecked, that way I can sort of um, really stretch my hair. Uh, it's kind of cool to look at when you check it because it's going to be preserving the, the length of the hair overall, but I just find it a bit wonky sometimes to really get the shape you want. So personally, I tend to uh, leave it unchecked. Okay, so now that our strand has got a nice curve to it, let's go to the shader editor and uh, add a new material. So I'm going to press on new, uh, then I'm going to delete the default principle BSDF. Uh, press shift A and type in air info node, which is going to give us access to a couple of outputs that are really useful uh, to control the look of this hair strand. Uh, next, I'm going to create a color ramp and I'm going to connect intercept into it to show you what it does. So basically intercept is going to create a gradient going from the root of our hair to the tip. And I can choose using color ramp, I can choose any color to uh, decide uh, what kind of gradient is applied onto my hair. So right away, it's going to look a bit nicer. And then I want to break it up, add a bit of a, of this texture you see here. So I'm going to make a noise texture by pressing shift a noise texture. I'm going to type in texture coordinate because I want to access this, uh, UV output, plug it into vector. And that way I'm going to access the UVs of my plane. And, um, then to mix it up, I'm going to make a mix RGB. And so my original color ramp is going to go in color one. This noise is going to go into the factor and it's going to drive this color. So the black and white values of my noise is going to decide where this black appears. And I'm going to create an extra, uh, color ramp. Uh, just after the noise texture, that way I can control the contrast uh, of the color ramp, as you can see. And you can, it doesn't have to be black and white. Like you can change this to a bit of a darker value. So you don't want to be 100% opaque. And then you can play with the scaling here to uh, give it the texture look you want. Another thing I like to do with that hair info node is to use the intercept output to drive transparency. That way I can uh, make this tip of the hair look a bit less sharp and more like a 2D, uh, 2D painted stroke. So the way to do this is to create a transparent BSDF, a mix shader node. Um, yeah. And then we're going to plug this transparent BSDF as the second shader input. This whole thing here is going to go in the first shader and the factor is going to be our intercept value. And so you can plug this into material output. Now, at first you're not going to see anything. Uh, because we haven't activated transparency in the material. Um, but if you go under settings, blend mode, and changes to alpha ash or alpha blend, you can sort of uh, get the, a nicer, softer finish here. And if you want to control it a bit better, you can create a color ramp, as always. Uh, put it just after the intercept. And that way you can sort of play with the setting and uh, maybe change it to B spline or whatever. To hide the top uh, emitter here, you basically have two options. Either you can um, add a transparency at the root this way with the pure white. So the top 
will disappear this way, which can be a bit nice. Or you can just go in your hair settings and um, you can disable from viewport display show emitter and render show emitter. That way it will just never show up. But I still like to add a bit of uh, a fading in the top here, again, to keep that sort of uh, painted stroke look. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how this looks right now. And let's say I want to start duplicating those hair strands and create more layering, uh, like in our reference. So I can press Shift D and move these around. And I can also uh, go in particle edit mode and start like moving those pieces of hair. But what's missing is that we're not getting those drop shadows that makes you really see the difference um, between these different layers. So how do we do that? Well, uh, what we'll need is a diffuse BSDF. And before I start like mixing things together, I'd like to organize uh, our setup a little bit because we already have 10 nodes and it's already kind of difficult to see where things, uh, how they are related. So let me create a frame. And this one, I'm going to call it um, noise. Make it a little bit bigger. Let's make one called transparency. Another one called uh, gradient. Finally, diffuse. So. The three nodes here is our noise. Um, the three nodes here are for transparency. And then you have the gradient here. This is going to be in there diffuse. And this one's going to be left alone because it's kind of a, a compositing stack. We're going to have multiple of these mixed nodes uh, just stacked uh, one behind the other uh, just to mix those different uh, frames together. So how do we mix this diffuse with the rest? Well, I'm going to create another mixed node here. And the diffuse is going to be deciding where this black color appears. And the rest here is going to be the lighted portion of our shader. So if I plug this output into the factor, you're going to see I get an error because I need the shader to RGB node. I'll just put this um, quickly in the same frame. And that way, uh, if I switch back, you're going to see uh, I do have a key light here. So if I move here, you're going to see a bit of a, of a difference. Now, uh, the problem is uh, right now it's inverted first. Um, I need to change this. All right. So now you see you're getting like a darker portion here where it's casting shadow, but you'll agree it's much too dark right now. So let me create a color ramp. As always, our most useful friend. And uh, we're going to be crunching that white value here as much as we can. Okay, so before we continue, I just want to explain something quickly about how normals work on the hair particles in Blender. Uh, by default, they're going to look like something on the right. Uh, they're not going to be actually generated as cylinders because that would be too heavy if you have tens of thousands of them. They're actually just planes, but Blender is simulating the normals to look like the cylinder. Um, and the normals would look something like this, where the ones on the side here are going to be pointing sideways. And it's great if you're doing realistic work uh, because you get this really like 3D look. But in our case, we want to do stylized work. And another option you can use is tangent normals instead. And what it means is that each of these sort of rings here is going to be taking its normals from the general curve of the hair. So you see how they're all pointing in this direction here. And what it does is it creates a nicer gradient that's, that's much better, especially if you look from a bit further away. It looks more like something you would paint uh, because you're not going to be uh, adding uh, shadows on each individual hair. If you paint them, you're just going to be painting this like one colored stroke and maybe there's going to be a gradient to your stroke itself, but not actual shading on each hair. So adding those tangent normals on your hair is really simple. Go to your hair info uh, node and plug the tangent normal output to the normal of your diffuse BSDF. And right away, you can see the difference in your scene. Now, there's still a couple of things that will affect the look of your shadows. One is in the render settings. Um, if you go under shadows, uh, cascade size, you're going to see that you get different results if you play with these settings. And also, uh, one big thing is on your key light itself, uh, under shadows. And I think I can show you better if it's like kind of sideways. Okay, so you see here how you, you still get those very like thin strands of black. Uh, if you play with the bias of your light, you can sort of um, get rid of most of them. So it's going to be looking um, more 2D. And of course, you can sort of um, smooth out 
this light here by playing with the angle to uh, make it a bit softer. So at this point, you might be thinking, well, this is cool and all, but this, this kind of looks like a piece of geometry I could have modeled and extruded along a curve. Um, so why did we bother making it using hair particle? And the reason is there's just so many cool options we can use with hair. Like, uh, first thing is, let's say I click on this hair strand and press edit mode. Well, I can add some subdivisions to this original plane, and then I can customize sort of the creases I get on my, so if I look at it from this angle, you can see I can create these creases and really uh, customize where I get these, uh, these darker shadows, you know? Um, also, like right now, if I play with these settings, they're all going to be affected the same. But if instead of doing Shift D, I do Control C, Control V, and move it, then this one's going to be unique. So I could, let's say I want to do this small strand of hair. I can just maybe put, I don't know, five hair or six hair. I don't know. Uh, maybe scale this like this. Okay. And let's say I don't want this uh, piece at, that the edge here to be so pointy. Uh, I can go to the uh, roughness, use roughness curve. And I could uh, play with this curve here to break up the edge, you know, like this. So this is not something you can easily do uh, with geometry. And, and this is really cool. Okay, so here I went ahead and created a couple more of these uh, single hair using the control C, control V method I talked to you about. Uh, just one thing to point out is when you do this, uh, by default, they're going to also duplicate the material. So they're not going to be linked to the original material. And so you kind of have to relink it. So what you can do is just sort of select all of them and maybe now unselect one that you know you want the material from reselect it um, and then control L link materials and so now they're all going to be linked to the same material and if you play with the transparency setting or whatever uh, they're all going to be uh, connected all right so at this point there's just two things that I feel are missing and let me take a screenshot of this in Photoshop the first thing is a um, soft specular highlight and we don't want to have something like too intense with lots of lines like this, like you might see in a more realistic um, shader. We just want to have a soft highlight. It gives it just a bit more volume. And then the other thing is we're missing is this rim light here, uh, as you see on these hair. And it cannot just light like the side of the hair. It needs to light up the whole strand. And we're going to do that with a translucent effect. Okay, so let's start by adding the specular. Um, we're gonna use a method that's very similar to what we did with the diffuse, uh, except this time we're gonna create a specular BSDF. Uh, then we'll need a shader to RGB, like we did with the diffuse, and a color ramp. And then uh, let's put this in a frame, just to, uh, again, keep things organized. Um, put it in there. All right, and to add it to our like our current shader, we're gonna use a mix RGB. Uh, so I just duplicated it with Shift D, and we're gonna change this to Add because we just want to add the specular on top. So color one is going to be our previous mix. Then we're gonna add this um, like light blue color, and what's going to be basically the mask telling where this light blue color appears is this specular. Uh, that we created. So it's going to go in the factor. Let's contrast this a bit. And um, all right, and this goes back into shader one here. So let's look at uh, how it looks right now. All right, so it's not looking right. The reason we're seeing all these uh, very thin line and the reason is we forgot to um, connect the tangent normal into the normal input of the specular BSDF. So again, let's look at the um, current preview. All right, so much better. Although 
Um, it looks a bit tree right now. Uh, it's it's got a nice shine to it, but I feel like it's a bit too perfect. So one thing we can do is um, break it up using the um, the noise texture that we made. And what we're going to do is you see all these lines that we made with the noise. There's like alternating bright and darker lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to offset this specular um, vertically depending on these lines. So uh, if certain lines are brighter, then it's going to offset vertically the specular a bit upwards and then downwards, and it's going to just break up the specular so it looks less perfect, basically. And the way we're going to do that is by uh, messing up the, the normal input here with a vector math. Basically, it's just vector math is a node that lets you um, do operations on a purple input like this. Um, which has three vectors. And then we're going to use the color ramp, output of the noise color ramp here in the second uh, vector input. And we're also going to be creating a map range node. And it's just going to give us a bit more control to decide how much offset we want. Uh, and what map range does is, let me just move these things. Okay. So, what map range does is it takes these values, which, which are going from zero to one, uh, black to white, and so from min to max, and then it says two min to max. So you can change the values uh, from zero to one to go to something, some like another min and max value. So you could say, hey, instead of going from zero to one, let's go from zero to 0.6, and it's just going to scale those values accordingly. So um, as you can see, now I can play with these uh, if I set it to zero, zero, there's going to be no offset. And then if I play with these values a bit, I can sort of, um, just move it around. So I just don't want to add too much of it. Just, just a little bit, um, like this. And if you don't want to have too much specular, you can either, um, reduce the, take a darker color that you add on top, or you can, uh, change this white value on the color ramp of the of the specular and make it uh, darker so it's going to be uh, less opaque so i think this looks pretty good uh for specular and next i'm going to show you how to add the uh the translucent effect for the, the nice rim light on the left here okay so to make the rim light effect we're going to use a translucent bsdf and i know some of you are starting out or maybe confused about what actually is a bsdf shader so I've set up a simple scene here with three basic planes, one with diffuse, one with specular, and one with translucent. I'm, I'm just going to explain to you what it does. So um, on this one, I have a BSDF, uh, a diffuse BSDF, and here I have a point light. So if I move my point light, you see uh, this one is getting all the light information in my scene. In this case, I just have a light. And if I use a cutter ramp, I can sort of crunch that information. But if I move my camera, uh, the information is going to be uh, the same. Uh, because it's just getting the diffuse information. Now on this one, I have specular BSDF. And so if I move my camera, we can see it's a specular. It's, it's that light getting reflected in it like a mirror. And um, if you, by default, I think the base color on the specular is white. So you're going to pick up diffuse information also. But if you bring that value down to something darker, you're going to get just a specular. Now the third one, the translucent BSDF is not going to pick up any light from the front. Uh, what's special about it is it's getting light from behind. So it's very useful for things like leaves and a tree and stuff like that. And it's going to work great for us for hair because if you stack, let me just show you, uh, multiple of these um, planes on one in front of one another, you're sort of going to see the light getting um, lost across that depth of planes. So the more planes you have and the less light is going to get through. And this is great because like you see each of these planes have no depth technically, but you can sort of see depth um, through it using this translucent effect. And this is exactly what we're going to be using uh, to make the rem light on our hair. Okay, so to add the last effect, translucency, we're gonna create the translucent BSDF a shader to RGB and a um, color ramp. Let's 
plug this in, plug this in. This time, let's not forget to connect our tangent normal coming from our hair info here. I'm gonna create a frame. All right, put this all into it. Um, this time, I don't think I'm going to be using a add uh, mix. I'm just going to be using a standard uh, mix node. Uh, use the output of our color ramp into the factor and use some kind of um, like desaturated purple like this. Crunch the color ramp a bit and let's see how this looks. Okay, so we're not seeing anything. That's normal. As you remember, um, it's only going to be picking up light that's coming from behind. Uh, so we could duplicate that Q light and if, okay, so if I make it uh, coming from the back here, um, it's not picking up anything because it's not strong enough. Uh, but if I make the strength like something like 10, now it's going to be picking up the, um, the rim light here. And personally, like it works with the sunlight. I really like using point lights for this because um, well, you have a couple more options like a custom distance. So let's say you just want to pick up a rim light at the top here, but not at the bottom. Uh, you can set up a distance of like, uh, I don't know, one, and then maybe that's too low, like two. Yeah, so you're only going to be picking up that, that top part here. And um, other options you can play with is the, well, clip start, you just want to keep it low because if it's too high, it's going to mess up your the look of it. But bias is pretty nice. If you bring it back up, you're gonna get like further into the um, the hair, I guess, because you're changing the bias of how shadows are casted. And this is how it determines um, how much it goes into the different planes stacked on top of one another. So um, yeah, it's pretty much. Uh, Best way I found to have uh, a cool rim light effect and create this, this arcane style. So that will be it for this tutorial. Uh, I hope you can take something from these tricks and apply them to your own characters. Next week we're going to release a second part where I'm going to show you some of my um, favorite uh, texture painting tricks and how to do camera mapping. Uh, so hope to see you there and thanks again for watching.